In this video, I want to show you how you can make use of the free GeoGebra website to investigate graph transformations. So if you head over to geogebra.org, and also most of what I'm telling you, you can do using their graphing calculator app, which is available for free for your phones and tablets as well. If we click Start Calculator, then we can sketch for ourselves a graph. The nicest way to do this so that we can easily adapt the inputs to this function as well as the outputs is to write f of x, so f open brackets, x close brackets, equals, and then create for yourself something that will give you a nice recognizable graph, something that's maybe not too symmetrical because we want to be able to see the effect of the transformations we're doing. So I'm going to use perhaps x minus 1, that will give me a graph that crosses the x-axis at 1, multiplied by x plus 2, so it's also going to cross at minus 2. Then perhaps I'll put a square there, so it has a repeated root at minus 2. And then I'll bring in one final term, I'll put in an x. So now my graph is a quartic graph. It's an x multiplied by x plus 2, multiplied by another x plus 2, multiplied by x minus 1. So it has roots at 1, 0, and minus 2. If you zoom in a little bit, you better see more clearly where the roots of the graph are, where the solutions to f of x equals 0 might be. And if you want those to be highlighted on the curve for you, then you can use the function called intersect. Intersect, open brackets, f, comma, and then we're going to give the equation of another line. Now, I want the x-axis, so I'm going to use y equals 0. And you can see that that straight away gives you the coordinates of those three points. You can see them on the graph and you can see their coordinates over here. We can also find the maximum and minimum points as coordinates. Even before we learn enough mathematics to generate these for ourselves, we can use the extremum function in GeoGebra. Extremum, open brackets, f. And that should pick out for us these three points. One of them you'll recognize, minus two, zero. That's not just a root, it's also a minimum. And then we've got this point up here, which is about minus 0.8, positive 2. And then there's a minimum down here as well. Now we've got those points, we can start to think about what happens when this curve gets changed. And what I mean by that is to start with something simple like this. y equals k times f of x. As soon as I enter that, we've got a new graph which is exactly overlaying the old graph, and that's because k is equal to 1 by default. But GeoGebra recognizes k as a constant that might vary. In other words, it's a number we can change as we choose. And if you use this slider over here, you can make k larger, and you can make k smaller, and you can even make k into a negative number. And by doing a little bit of that and paying attention to the values of k you choose, you can identify all sorts of interesting patterns and features of what's going on. For a start, we can see that if k is negative 1, then the entire graph looks like it's been reflected in the x-axis. If we set k to be something like a half, then the curve we're looking at, at any given x value, the height of my curve is half of the height of the original curve, which makes sense. The y-coordinates for this new blue graph are half of the y-coordinates of the original green graph. That has no effect on the roots, however, because if you multiply 0 by any number, you're still going to get 0. So it looks like multiplying a function by some constant has the effect of stretching the curve vertically. We might describe this as a sketch, a stretch by scale factor 2 in the y direction. Or we might say a stretch by scale factor 2 parallel to the y-axis. Everything's been moved either up or down, depending on whether it was above or below the x-axis. So it's being moved further away from the x-axis as k gets larger. You can even animate k if you want to see this in action, so you can think of it as a physical stretching or distorting of the graph. You can also make sense of here what a negative stretch might be. So if we're looking at a, a value like minus 1.5, then yes, the points are one and a half times further away than the original graph from the x-axis, but they're also in the opposite direction. So the maximum point corresponds to a minimum point on the new curve. And what used to be a minimum 
now appears to be a maximum for the new transformed curve. We might refer to this blue curve as the image of the old curve. Just like when you did shape transformations a few years back, you might have referred to the new shape as the image of the old shape. So the original function f of x is still here in green. And the image of f of x, which here has been labeled as g by GeoGebra automatically, is a scaled version of the original curve. But adding an additional complexity in here, what if we were interested in doing something different with k? Instead of multiplying k by f of x, what if we were to add it? And we get a different effect here. And it's probably an effect that you could predict. If k is 0, then the effect is as if nothing had happened. We have the original function plus nothing to give me the new y coordinate. But if k gets a bit bigger, then the function moves upwards. This is a perfect translation. So if we couldn't see the axes, there would be nothing to choose between these two graphs. There's no difference between them apart from their position relative to the x-axis. But of course that means for a quartic graph like this, it might well be that you no longer have any roots at all. So the roots of a graph, when you translate it, are likely to A, move, and then B, potentially disappear. We can have a point here where the original curve has three roots. One's a repeated root there, but the new curve, the image of the curve under this transformation has four roots, one slightly above one, one between negative one and zero, another between negative one and negative two, and another between negative two and negative three. And depending on the value of k you choose, you might have fewer roots, you might have no roots at all. One thing to notice about the maximum and minimum points here is that the minimum point of the original curve corresponds to the minimum point of the new curve. The maximums correspond to maximums. And although the height of the minimum or maximum points may be different because we've moved them up or down, the nature of those is unchanged. In other words, if it's a maximum, it's still a maximum. And the x-coordinate of those points is still the same. Now, that's what happens when you mess with the y-coordinate. Effectively, what I'm doing is leaving the function f of x intact and I'm either adding or subtracting or multiplying or dividing by something. And that has the effect of either moving things vertically or, if we were multiplying again, stretching things vertically. But what happens if we mess with the x input value in here? So instead of k times f of x, what if I have f of x plus k? Now my image has jumped to the left. That might not be what you're expecting. k equals 1 at the moment. And if k equals an even larger number, the curve moves even further to the left. But it was x add k. This new function, this blue one, is f of x add 5 right now. And yet somehow it's further left than the original function f of x. So why is it that adding 5 to the input value has what seems to be the opposite effect to what we would expect? on the resulting graph. Well, in reality, what's happening here is that an input value is provided to the function, like negative 4, but before the function gets to work on the input value, we add 5 to it. So negative 4, add 5, gives 1, and then the function is applied. Now, we know what the function does. The original function, the green function, is here, and if you give it an input value of 1, it'll give you an output of 0. So that's exactly what's plotted over here at minus 4. It's as if this curve in blue is looking ahead into the future five places. So every single x-coordinate that we plot something for, for this blue graph, is showing us what would happen on the original curve five places ahead of where we are. Another way to think of this would be what value of x will we need to substitute in here to get the same result as, let's say, f of 0 here. We have the point 0, 0 on the original curve. We'd need to have x equal to negative 5 to get f of 0 on the new curve because negative 5 add 5 is how you get f of 0. So that one is definitely a little counterintuitive. If you want to move the curve to the right, you would need to add a negative value for k. This is f of k minus, sorry, f of x minus 5. And the effect is to move the curve to the right effectively. The image of the curve is a translation 
by vector 5, 0. In other words, 5 units to the right and no units up or down. If we have a positive number for k once more, we would describe this one, for instance, as a translation by vector negative 1, 0. So the top number in your vector is negative 1 and the bottom number in your vector is 0. We're moving to the left by one place. And we don't have to stop at adding, we could multiply inside the brackets as well. f of x times k will now affect the value of the input through multiplication before the function gets its hands on it. And you can see if k is 1, obviously this is no different. But when k is 2, again, something counterintuitive happens. If we multiplied the entire function by 2, like we had before, 2 times f of x, then we would just double the y coordinate. But that's not what we're doing here. We're multiplying the input by 2. We have f of 2x. So what's happening is, for any given x coordinate, like minus 1, first it gets doubled, so that would give us minus 2, and then the original function is applied. f of minus 2 gives 0, therefore my new function, which is f of 2 lots of minus 1, will also give 0. And the effect of this is a stretch in the x direction, or a horizontal stretch, but this stretch has the opposite scale factor to the value that x has been multiplied by. f of 2x represents a stretch of scale factor a half in the x direction. It gets more extreme, the larger k becomes. This is a stretch of scale factor one-fifth in the x direction. And if you want to see a stretch that actually pulls it apart instead of effectively squashing it together, we need to make k equal to something like a fifth. If we have k equal to a fifth, suddenly our graph has been stretched out by a scale factor of 5. So if you have f of x over 5 or f of x over 2, then you're going to get a distortion which pulls the graph outwards. Every point on the x-axis is twice as far away from the baseline, the y-axis, as it was before. So the point 1, 0 has now moved out to the point 2, 0. The point negative 2, 0 has been moved out to the point negative 4, 0. And the only points that will remain unchanged are any points where the curve crosses the y-axis, because the distance from the y-axis is 0, and if you multiply that distance by any number you like, it'll remain 0. So hopefully that's given you a sense of how we can investigate these things and a little bit of an idea of why they work the way they do. If you want to combine these so that you can see more of what's going on, I recommend you make a few sliders. So you might start with A equals slider and you want to go from minus 2 to 2, let's say. B is also a slider and that will go from minus 2 to 2. And once you've got an A and a B, you can start creating combinations of transformations. For instance, maybe we have a plus f of x plus b. This is going to do translations because we've got adding involved, but the one on the outside of the function is going to move it vertically, and the one on the inside of the function is going to move it horizontally. But again, notice in the opposite direction to what you might think. So if we want to move this curve by vector 2, 1, for instance, we need it to move two places to the right, which means we need the number inside our bracket to be a negative 2, and we need to move it one place up. So the number we add on afterwards needs to be a positive 1. And that way we can get a translation to wherever we like. We can move in any direction, any distance we like. We just need to break it apart into a horizontal and vertical component, and then we can perform the transformation questions that you might uh, be able to answer from this would be where is the minimum point of this new blue graph? Where is the other minimum point of the new blue graph? And you can interpret that by thinking about the transformation from the original green graph. The blue graph is exactly the same scaling. It's the same picture. Again, if we weren't looking at the axes, there'd be nothing to choose between these two graphs. They're exactly the same shape. It's just that one is in a slightly different position to the other. And so if we know, for instance, that there is a minimum at minus 2, 0, we just need to move that point according to the same translation vector, 2 to the right and 1 up, and we get the minimum of our new graph, 0, 1.